Hey guys out there, how's it going? It's the Holy Hour, the bi-weekly all-cure podcast. Woo. How's it going? Me? Are you asking me or the audience? No, nah, I'm, I'm asking the audience. I was waiting. Oh, good. I, I think they're good. They How are you doing, Donald? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel a little left out that you asked the audience first, not the person you're fucking talking to. I mean, <laughs> I was asking them. I'm being courteous. I talk to you all the time. I figured <laughs> let our guest have a seat and get comfortable, make them feel welcomed, and then we could, you know. But but now on to you. How are you doing, Donald? Um, I'm the third wheel of podcast of Cure Podcasting. So <laughs> wheel on up, man. <laughs> I'm no longer the bad boy. I'm the third it's wheel. Just the of... third wheel. <laughs> just here hanging out with me and uh, an uh, unknown <laughs> amount of strangers. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great, man. Everything's cool. Cool. Well, definitely not a third wheel because Donald here is saving the day on this episode. Good listeners, <laughs> I must inform you of my little secrets. Um, yeah, uh, quick rundown of what's going on on our side of the world post disintegration episode. Um, that episode was so epic. I was just so exhausted. I felt I just need to escape to the beach. I need a vacation. So uh, I took a. <laughs> Actually, it was my. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was my wife's birthday, so we headed off to the beach. And, uh, of course, like with most beach trips, you plan on having all these grand things that you're going to do once everybody goes to sleep. And one of those was like, oh, I can knock out a podcast easy. I got this uh, kind of loose topic one coming up. And so I kept waiting for the right night, and uh, I was kind of hitting the beers as you do at the beach, you know. And I started early in the day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> the night that it came to the right moment, um, the, the part that really hit, hiccuped my progress that night was that the moon was coming up over the sea and I was sitting on the porch. I was like, whoa, this is so like cure and epic. And it was like full moon and it was like red and it was like super creepy. And I'm like, well, I got to just wait this out. So I had like maybe five more beers waiting for this fucking moon. <laughs> to come. Gonna wait for this. You're going to wait this moon out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's called all night. And then it totally <laughs> just, yeah, it came up where I was finally up in the sky and it didn't look that creepy at all. It was just a full moon. And I was like, oh, all right. So I snuck off into this car corner of the house because i didn't want to wake anybody up and curled up with a little light with my notes and and i rambled on and i made it through like about 45 minutes and and it just was one of those embarrassing moments where don on me i was like i sound insane i think i haven't even listened back to it but it was just like a drunken man's babble with like no <laughs> <laughs> like worse than normal when i talk about the cure with myself on these episodes where i do it, it it's usually probably a little of that but this was just bad because i think i was like slurring more than normal talking about the moon i even brought i was up, gonna see i did about i talked about the moon minutes. for like 15 minutes and so um yeah so i was like i, can't, I don't have time to redo it i was like i just gotta get back home and uh give my buddy donald a call and let's just try this sucker again so thank you for <laughs> for first night back so i'm already a little loopy brain still we drove 10 hours back so 11 hours technically but so whew. So yeah, well, thanks. I'm happy man. to help out, man. Yeah, it's a weird episode, but it's a good one, I think. I didn't mean to scare off any listeners. This is a a, a very uh, celebratory episode. It's technically the Robert Smith birthday episode. <laughs> so happy birthday, Robert Smith! By the time this airs, it it'll be like the week before. So his birthday's on Saturday. So we're still early, even when this airs. But um, and he'll never hear this, but. We just have to say happy birthday because, uh, you know, he's kind of what this is all about. And Dude, I'm going to hashtag him on Instagram about this. So oh, yeah? You think this will be the one that yeah, pulls him in? <laughs> be like, that happy be, birthday, he's like, Robert Smith. He's like, I heard they talked about disintegration for two and a half hours, but I want to hear him say happy birthday. <laughs> and right. This will be the one that pulls him in, I think. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Not his whole back catalog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was picking apart his whole back catalog, but uh, uh, us just saying, I love you, Robert. Thank you for being born and alive. But, um, but I do want to say that. Happy birthday. He was born on April 21st. 1959 so uh it's weird that it's also his 59th birthday but that's not even my main conspiracy theory yep i, I lured donald in with this one 
Um, there is a bit of a pattern I noticed with birthdays and weirdness, so I thought I'd share, as I often do, come up with these number theories for for the cure. And uh, this is Wait, a, when the fuck's his birthday? Uh, nineteen fifty nine. Right, of, like April what? Uh, April twenty first. So this Saturday. He's a day away from four twenty, dude. Yeah. yeah. Well, that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I'm saying that's what this whole thing's going to be about. Okay, well, if you want to take that angle, go for it. <laughs> I got my own crazy shit here. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so I didn't even realize 59th, he's turning 59, and he was born in 1959. Not much more, yeah. really, you can stretch out of that other than that's kind of cool, right? So. Hell yeah, and I'm smoking a bowl right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Happy birthday, 420. Robert. It's like, well, it's technically 421, but whatever. You know. <laughs> Every 420, Happy birthday, Robert. 420. <laughs> and it's like, it's the uh, 21st. 20, it's the 21st. <laughs> I think we even did say that last year when we did some kind of birthday related. You're like, it's 420. I'm like, no, not really. It's 421. But uh, but um, <laughs> this day, that's also a little weird because uh, we all know this Saturday coming up is not only... Robert Smith's birthday, but record store day. But like, there's a big, big release, and we'll actually talk about that this episode too. And we figured it'd be a good time to uh, address the Meltdown Festival, 25th Meltdown Festival that Robert Smith is curating, and run through the bands as a little preview. Most of the bands you know at least by name, but we figured we'd just kind of do the run through and. Uh, Tell you guys what we think, <laughs> in our humble opinion, of these <laughs> bands on the list that Robert Smith himself has picked. So, in the same breath, uh, we um, will be saying happy birthday, but we'll also be judging his choices for the <laughs> big festival that he's curating as a big salute right. to in his honor. But, um, so yeah, the weird thing about his birthday that I stumbled across with scribbling notes out was uh, kind of stemmed off what we talked a lot about in the last episode with disintegration and just age in general is something that we always seem Mm -hmm. to dwell on a lot when we're doing the album episodes of like, wow, he was only this age. Wow. He was only that age. And, and just where we are in comparison and stuff, it's just kind of fun and weird to look back and see where this guy was at his point when he's making a lot of these albums that changed a lot of our lives. Right. So, um, yeah. So, like, I started scribbling down just the dates because we've talked a lot about disintegration because, you know, it's kind of common knowledge, but just the idea that he was 29 turning 30 in 1989. So yeah, and that was a huge premise of disintegration that we went on and on about, right? <laughs> so we had that, like, pegged down, but then I started looking at all, like, the 10-year blocks, and it was kind of weird. And it starts out very strong, like a lot of Cure stuff. And then by the end, it starts to stretch out and like, eh, it kind of fits. But like it, 10 year chunks. Yeah. Well, when you think of just like decades. Yeah. And then his yeah. are weirder because it's like a weird pattern kind of seemed to emerge where it wasn't so much the like 20s, 30s, 40s, but like the nines of every year were a big deal for him and like most people. But a lot of it's going on the big deal so like 19 29 39 49 and now this year he's turning 59 so it's like oh speculation maybe is something crazy gonna happen this year that we don't even know about because he tends to do epic shit on his nines and then release it when he would be 60 say next year so um so the pattern i jotted down was um Let's see. So when he's 19 years old, back in 1978, right? Um, almost 79. Yeah, almost 79, which is the first <laughs> album, Three Imaginary Boys, comes out when Nine he's imaginary when he's boys. yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> not imaginary boys. Uh, when he's 20, right? So it all starts on a nine, basically. The first single did come out in 78, Killing an Aram, which is why they marked the 40th anniversary this year. Um, because that came out in December of 78. So it all kind of starts at 19. Jesus. Right? So then jump ahead 10 years, which is kind of crazy just to think of in an awesome celebration of Robert Smith's life in the sense of how much ground he even covered just in that first fucking 10 years of music. He was still doing it 10 years later from 19. Yeah. (laughs) It's amazing. (laughs) And the jump from Killing an Arab at 19 to recording Disintegration at 29. Like how vast of a 
you know, music career that he had already wrapped up in that point. So that's crazy. That's only uh, that was only ten years. Yeah, doesn't that seem like wow. that's like would be so much more, right? And uh, so yeah, at 29, 10 years later, he's recording Disintegration, freaking out, freaking out about turning thirty, and uh, eventually does nineteen eighty nine. So, and then uh, ten years later from that is maybe the tie that people are always trying to find in those ties between disintegration and blood flowers and such. Um, other than him tapping back into pornography and channeling that for disintegration and blood flowers, but he's turning 40 on blood flowers. So 39 is when he's recording blood flowers and releases it when he turns 40 in 2000. So kind of fits in again. At 39, there's at least an epic album to him, you know, even though a lot of Cure fans are kind of torn on the epicness of Blood Flowers. <laughs> what <laughs> but, came out in between? Um, Disintegration and Blood Flower? Yeah. Not much. It was Wish, um, Wild Mo- and what? Wish, Wish pretty immediately, but then there's those huge gaps between Wild Mood Swings. And that's it, I think. So, yeah, we start, yeah, get, we start getting these huge pickings. gaps. And that's another weird thing that you kind of notice yeah. with all these is just how big the gaps get in between all these. Like, cause only in the sense that they cranked them out so much in that first ten years, it was like every year there was an album, and then like pretty much after disintegration, we start getting two year gaps, then four year gaps, then eight year gaps. <laughs> so, Dude's tired. Uh, yeah, you know. I guess I mean, it his makes first sense. ten years in the music business uh, were intense. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> So the give, the, jump, give the man a minute. Yeah, totally. I, I don't hold it against it, and that's what most bands uh-huh. do now, anyways. You know, it's like like always, after like their second, yeah, like, we made it, so we're gonna take a kid hiatus. bands now, even the fucking bands that I'm not into that people conceive as like or perceive as like uh, epic bands like Arcade Fire always blow my mind. Where it's just like they take off like eight years in between every album. It's like, did you really earn that right? I mean, that first album was good, <laughs> but like, come on, man, what the fuck? The kid earned the right to take take off but um yeah no fuck so so yeah i mean just in that sense up until blood flowers even is enough mm-hmm. but then and then this is where it stretches a bit between 413 dream the last album and it gets a little thrown off but he was 49 let's see i think i jotted it down where it was a little too early he was like 49 and it came out in 2008 so he wasn't quite mm-hmm. a 10 year rap so maybe that was like the reason why 413 Dream is awesome, but it's not quite awesome. <laughs> he should have just waited one more year, I think was my my theory. <laughs> but, uh, and it would have been a little, it would have fit into the 10 year gap a bit more. So uh, it did, it came out in 2008 and it should have came out in 2009. So there's where it went wrong. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but then it's kind of sad on top of that is like, and then we haven't had a new album for almost 10 years now. So t- 2008 was 413 Dream. And now we're coming up on uh, oh, 10 years. Man. So he's either recording something right now and we don't know about it. And it's going to be the most epic Cure album ever or the 40th anniversary show and the movie and putting out mixed up on vinyl is the epic. <laughs> he's toned it down a little in his own <laughs> age. Yeah. But that's where we are to catch us up. So uh, like I said, it starts out strong with this theory of the nines. And, but I it mean, does. but uh, yeah, so well, something to think about on Robert's birthday as you uh, and other the people. The span of there. his life and all he's done. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a pretty hefty chunk of decades there and uh, yeah. accomplishments. When when someone can break down your life in decades <laughs> and it's just like I put out a million f- records and toured a lot, did a lot of things, you know. Yeah, like, that's that's pretty... impressive, man. That's a lot of yeah, a lot a, of shit to do. It's, it's a good way to feel proud on your birthday for a long time. Is my point. Yeah, and some psycho yeah. like me sitting around drinking too many beers, looking at a bloody moon, going, "I figured it out. <laughs> I figured out the key to your uh, madness." <laughs> But, um, I would like to think that like once the moon like you sat there and watched it rise and then you're like just quiet for hours and you were like nines I got it and just got up and grabbed your podcasting gear yep it was. And, you know just like it all makes sense <laughs> yeah, yeah start scribbling in the book <laughs> the next morning I was like oh the theory kind of falls apart by the end there but I don't know maybe it was on this you, you got a sextant out. Uh, and it's like <laughs> you're like the moon's at nine right now. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> like, I got it. Nines. 
It was never about the threes. <laughs> so something along those lines, as always. Crossed out three written on a chalkboard. Yeah, it's nines. <laughs> like, no, it's nines now. <laughs> Not, but three goes into nine three times. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Chaz, I got to call him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Four in the morning. <laughs> Wake up. Um, nines, dude. We gotta do nines, but uh, yeah. So that's uh, where where he is on his birthday, fifty nine years old, and uh, just kind of crazy because it, it almost doesn't seem that crazy though. And but when he turns sixty, that will seem a little weird. Where I'm like, oh my god, even though it's only yeah. one year age difference, but like just the thought of Robert Smith being sixty, you know, which. I don't really think of him as a human, so it's not really that like. <laughs> yeah, it's like whatever. He's sixty. He's still Robert Smith. Whatever. He could be ninety, nine hundred, and it won't really matter. It's kind of Bowie esque yeah. to me. You know how I feel. A lot of people felt about Bowie. Probably I feel about Robert. Timeless. Yeah. So I mean, especially if he's still playing three hour long shows and sounding great, then fine. It'll be like one thing if he was like, oh, "All right, guys, we're gonna do a." Acoustic yes. coffee shop version of Right in my love. Somebody get my stool. You know, it's like, yeah. ooh, <laughs> come on, man. I was so. told there'd be a stool here. Yeah, just I'm not standing there. for. Yeah, he's just doing like the Elvis guitar where he plays like every fourth chord or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he's got like some like 20 year old kids playing behind him or something. But, uh, <laughs> that'd be sad. So hopefully it'll never get to that. But I can't imagine yeah. it. it the, a, ability that he's at now that that would ever happen you know i think he's smart oh, enough to yeah. to just die before that whether he likes it or not so but uh no. what do you think do you think he's the uh what kind of celebrations this dude have for his 59th birthday since we love to speculate on this show do you think he's a, a just stay at home with mary kind of birthday dude or is he having like a fucking puff daddy party where he's got like the the yacht out and they're all throwing down these days or what do you think like he's probably just having like a nice dinner. Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> just chilling out. Not like. too hardcore then. You don't think he like rented <laughs> out of I'm the plaza? Going fucking hard. <laughs> I think he could. You don't know with him. He might. He might. So, I don't know. I really have no idea. I could see him throwing down, but I could see it being very like chill. He probably had like a huge party like a month ago, and now he's just like, dude, he's like almost sixty. He's probably like, I don't know, dinner's not sitting with me well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like, <laughs> sure, yeah, <I> <laughs> he's like, I want to go. Uh, do, you, do you want to Netflix and chill? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and by throwing oops. down, I don't really mean like doing acid and like coming up with disintegration part <laughs> four or anything. <laughs> I hope that'd be dope if he yeah, does acid yeah, out of uh... <laughs> <laughs> these pills will see on the other side. <laughs> Goes into uh, that quantum cure shit again, maybe. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> he transports to his other body or something. So. <laughs> but, uh... Quantum. <laughs> <laughs> he goes goes and parties in his other body for a while and comes back. It's like back when <laughs> the quantum universe where him and Lola are still friends. Yeah. <laughs> Lola's like, wait, I thought this was this. But he's like, no, Lola, other other the body. Di different timeline, Lola. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn it. Again. Do I, do I have to apologize to every Robert? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. And I wonder if he's going to hit up Record Store Day, which is uh, on his actual birthday this year. Dun dun. Robert <laughs> Smith Day, Record Store Day has the same initials, too. It's pretty weird. I'm going to be celebrating it in the honor of Robert Smith more than Record Store Day. I'm a little pissy at Record Store Day in these past few years. If you hadn't Why? picked up on it on my vibe of last year's, um, I think it's just kind of turned into this clusterfuck and people are like putting shit out and like kind of a weird, I mean, it's cool. I'm torn because it's like, I like that any motivation for a band to put out, especially a band like The Cure at this point, like anything, whether it be just for the sake of Record Store Day or if it's something they were going to release anyway. But I feel like a lot of people put out these things and it seems like just kind of a an excuse because I know people are going to go ape shit and buy it. But then like more just going to the record store, it's like a fucking madhouse on these things. And like, there's so many yeah, people dude. there and everything's just like expensive as shit. And, and it's all like vinyl too, which is a whole other debate for me. Where it's just like, put some shit out. You know, if I buy two records, it's going to be like 40 fucking dollars now with this new vinyl shit. You know, it's like, even with this new mixed up thing that's coming out, it's like, I get like mixed up because that came out 
like in the unvinyl age originally. So like, it's really hard to get mixed up on vinyl, the original version, you know, because it was like not yeah. ninety. So like, they didn't put that many out. So they're all going for like hundreds of dollars and shit if you try to buy them online. Um, so that's cool. You finally put one out now that people can actually afford. Um, but then the new album, it's like... I'm not going to spend 20 bucks on it. Yeah, I mean, I would like if I could. I want to, in a sense. I'll but I mean, download that shit or something. Yeah. But, well, that's the thing. Or like just the, listen to it on line or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what like, like, the new, cool new, new vinyl thing prices are is nuts, coming out man. with it. Yeah, so Torn torn Down is the big, big uh, Cure release that's coming out as a separate thing. So you don't have to buy it with mixed up at least, but um, so it's a whole new batch of cool old songs remixed by Robert. So I'm totally down. I want to hear the fuck out of those, but um, like really cool song selections, uh, and it comes with a download card. But it's kind of like I don't know. Am I the last motherfucker that just wants to buy it on CD and like make it a lot yes. easier? Because <laughs> it's like, come on, yeah, why dude. do I have to buy it on vinyl just to get the download card? Like, it's great that you have the vinyl, but it's like everyone's just gonna fucking listen to the downloads after like a month of having it on vinyl, and it's like, it's like I'm gonna listen to it on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> like a year later, though. I wonder how. No one's going to upload that shit right away. It's going to take forever. It's going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to probably try to wait in the damn line. Because that's like last year. It sold out before I could get to the end of the fucking line and buy the thing. And it was like, that's like a bummer, you know? And then it's like, and then it might be, who knows? It was it like be, a line to get into the record store? Yeah. They're all like around Shut the block. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do that. That's, that's like every, Yeah. Everyone just like it goes nuts for it and people just buying the shit out of it. I don't know if it's people who don't normally buy records anyway or what the deal is, but I mean, a lot of it is just like exclusive stuff like this that they don't have that many pressings of and they put it out just for today. And then you get into like the whole scalping thing where people are just buying tons of shit and then they resell it because they know that they're not going to be able to get it. You know, Do they have so a limit like like five per customer. Some of like them were doing that. One per customer. Yeah, it gets into like weird ticket shit, you know, and like even the record store here in Asheville, like they like what, what do you, they walk through the line like, what are you going to be buying? They don't know. They were even <laughs> threw it up on their Facebook page. We're like, well, should we do it different? Because they've kind of had it just like we're first come, first serve. They set it's it all chaos. up. It's chaos. Yeah. And, you know, I think they're going like, to stick to that. It's it. probably the best way to do it. But, I mean, it's like, because, yeah, if you do, like, first 10 people can only get one record. You know what I mean? It just gets into, like, weird rules where everyone gets kind of pissed and something will fuck it up or somebody will grab something. You know? And it's just like. It's just, I think kind of like the, like, like, kind of like. I don't know, but what if someone was to like, oh, my friend loves this band. I'm going to buy yeah, them. Yeah, I know. And that's even kind of... Because it's I've like, I want to say like one one per person should be it. Like, yeah. like you get one per like one per artist. Yeah. Like you can't buy multiples of the same record. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or but why... then what if you want to pick one up and then pick one up for yeah. like while I'm here, like they'll love this. I don't know. I feel like if it's these bigger artists, they should just be pressing up real amounts of this shit. Fucked on. You know, don't press yeah. up 20 Cure albums and put it out. or You know what I mean? It's just like yeah. I felt like the record stores I went to, there was only like 10 at the most, probably not even that, you know? And it was like, I don't know. I can't gauge the popularity of anything anymore, but it's like it just seemed like they didn't have enough of anything, you know? And it was yeah. like, I mean, and I'm sure they had tons of it or whatever it is, but, you know, it's just kind of like made to be that way, I think, or it's like, well, and it's cool because it is like an exclusive, exciting thing. That's why I'm torn on it. You know, I'm glad that they're doing it. And, you know, builds the excitement. And yeah. Everything. And then even like the, with the record thing this year, that's what pissed me off in a sense is that they're probably just going to put it out like the greatest hits thing they put out last year that I didn't get, but then they re put it out. It's just not a picture disc or something. And they put it out like a month later just for everybody to get on like Amazon. So you can't get it again, but you just don't know. It's like that factor. You don't know. And I'm sure this torn down thing's going to come out probably even on CD like a month or so later, but they haven't announced it. You know what I mean? So it's just yeah. like one of these things where it's like, as of now, I feel like that's going to be the only chance I get to hear it right away. It's going to be like a digital download on iTunes yeah, or some bullshit. It's gotta like be. a week later, that's man. That's what I'm like, kind of thinking. So, it but is. I mean, it's like I want to get wrapped up in the excitement and get a cure thing. And 
I don't know if that'll break my record of buying it on the d- release day. I mean, it's not officially a new album, right? So it doesn't go good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like all torn, man. I got so many. But uh, yeah, I you mean, can't they... go to Best Buy and buy a CD on this one, buddy. No, like, what the you, fuck? You... I gotta wait in some crazy ass line to buy some forty dollar record that I just want the downloads of anyway. I mean, the vinyl's great, but it's like, <laughs> what the fuck, really? Man, just give it time. Just yeah, give it time. I guess that's the way to do it, but uh. Well, I don't, know. As, uh-huh. I don't know, man. As a pod cure podcaster, you might have to. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Interview uh, people in line. in line. Are you here to get the cure thing? Good. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're like, who? Yeah. <laughs> We're here for the Jack White album. <laughs> <laughs> well, he pressed it himself. Yeah, uh, <laughs> with his own hands. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he made his own out of his own skin. And it's like, what? <laughs> that sounds horrible. He's uh, <laughs> the purest form. You can only... There's only one version, and it's his cock, yeah. and it's like one of those Edison you can only... rolls, like yeah. those big metal tubes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like, like those early vinyls. Yeah. You can only listen to it on the gramophone or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah that's his dick. <laughs> it's the only needle that can play this. Like, oh, <laughs> great, his dick is a, he's a big man. <laughs> <laughs> it's his dick is the needle? And that's like, oh, wow, it's not even that good of a song. <laughs> but I mean, it's cool, I guess. Uh, I think I'm just going to get drunk and play every Cure album for Robert Smith's birthday. And then uh, maybe by the time I'm done playing them all, somebody will uploaded it to itunes or something but, or uh <laughs> even better somewhere else but i don't know i'm torn but i really want to hear those mix uh new remixes man don't they, they sound pretty, i don't know you, you I've, I've been thinking about this one yeah what do you think uh fucking cool uh, track listing three imaginary boys m drowning man strange day just one kiss shake dog shake a night like this like cockatoos plain song but, never enough edge of deep you see want Last day of summer, cut here, lost, it's over. That's a pretty solid track listing, man. It's not bad. But I mean but he's I, doing it all but he's doing it all himself, like Yeah. But is he having like guests like <laughs> no and I don't know if they're like stuff in there? Like And even based on old mixed dark. Dark, Yeah, you don't know if it's like get weird. remixing is in like he's just cutting stuff out and redoing it like a like an actual mix, or is he making them like like, like a dub chicka, mix chicka, or something. Chicka, yeah, like, I don't know. Because even, like, mixed up itself is a little weird that way. Where, you know, it's you, a little dancey. It's, it's all program beats and yeah, shit. Yeah, like. yeah, it's pretty dancey. But a lot of it is just kind of, like, extended mixes, too. Like, a lot of those, like, disintegration ones aren't necessarily, like, they swapped out the beat or anything for a lot of them. They're just kind of, like, really dragged out versions. Yeah. Of it. I mean, the beats are all kind of, you know. Like, exaggerated. Yeah. So Like, the, like the, the drums and bass are a little exaggerated, but there's some, like, reimaginings, kind of. Yeah. So, I don't know, um, man. But it'd be... Is it going to be a dub version of Three Matching Movie Boys? <laughs> you know, which might be kind of tight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, especially if, if he's If just done by some someone weirdos. that can... Yeah. Like, an electronic artist, like... Yeah. You I mean, doubting his mix master skills? Then he's saying a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I guess bit. we don't really have much evidence, but he's. he's I mean, sixty-year-old dudes are gonna like really <laughs> drop some thunder on like. Oh, some, like, you're already playing the age card. He's not, he's <laughs> I know. Not even at his official I'm birthday. He's like fifty-nine, old man. <laughs> Can't be mixing it up. But yeah, who knows? I mean. I'm on the ones and twos. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but. No, but, but I'm sure. I mean, he's not an idiot. Like I'm sure. I'm sure he's gonna do something like this normal and like isn't embarrassing. Yeah, but, yeah, it um, just probably won't be that drastic. If anything. he's like, "Cut your hair," yeah, it might be like overly technical. Or it's like, I raised the guitar solo like two notches. <laughs> I was like, "Oh wow," <laughs> it's like the same yeah. exact thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but because they're not gonna do that, it's gonna be a little electronicy. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. It might be, but uh, I'd be worried if it was some like nineteen-year-old kid that I doubt has even like heard a Cure album all the way through or something. You know, it's all like, my nephew. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's like yeah, I'll remix that shit for you. <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> just never enough, never enough. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, 
I don't know. That sounds all right. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, you know, it'd be it'd be kind of interesting to see if he got like um, some help or input. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he did because that's an undertaking. (laughs) But but I hope he did because I think that might be kind of interesting, just with like the modern crop of like electronic remix artists and like technology itself yeah in music and what you can do with shit like that yeah, it'd be cool is, just to hear it a little different a lot, is, yeah it's pretty different than uh when uh mixed up was done yeah for sure initially you know yeah you could probably do all kinds of crazy shit so yeah, yeah. so i think it'd be interesting to hear like if if nothing else like i'm not super psyched about yeah. it but it's gonna be an interesting listen well that's the plan for now i'll try to get this damn thing and uh Get the downloads. I'm assuming you're not gonna wait in the line, so I'll try to hook you up no. with the with the downloads as soon as I get That'd them. Be and cool. and uh, cause next on our table for reviews anyway would be mixed up. We kind of been sticking to the official albums, but since we somehow synced up in in the release time of this, it would be cool to do a mixed up. Dude, that's review. That's a anyway. new conspiracy theory. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> How did we? Sync this is our it ninth up? episode. Seventy <laughs> ninth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Fifty nine. <laughs> ah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll try to. If not this next episode coming up, it'll be the one after that. Some kind of mixed up review and probably a review of torn down too. So. So, shifting gears from uh, Record Store Day and birthdays, the other big event coming up this year is um, the Meltdown Festival (laughs) going on that Robert Smith himself is curating. Everybody probably knows about the general idea at this point, but uh, basically the 25th edition of this epic uh, 10 days, I think it is. like That's a long time. June 15th to the 24th. And they initially announced like a wave of mostly headliners, I guess. Um, And then they just have like different uh, venues all around England, I guess. And um, then they, uh, yeah, he picked all the bands. So that's what the big curating uh, is, is that he gets the honor of picking all the bands. The cure. Aiding. (laughs) Aiding. Yeah. So uh, puns. Does he pick all the little bands too? Or just like the headliners? Yeah, I think he picks everyone. So it's all So I haven't seen the little band list. I've just seen like the big headliners. Yeah, just today, uh, the day we're recording this. um, So you probably could put the math together. He, um, (laughs) they, they, somebody just posted an ad came out that has a whole bunch of like, the smaller bands, and I think maybe even some more are still coming. But uh, so we got a list. some of those are kind of cooler. Yeah, than the, the and there's a lot of good ones, and uh, we're kind of just gonna run through it. And this is another one where I wanted Donald's opinion, where we can kind of just uh, go through and uh, you know give our two cents. If maybe it's a band you haven't heard of, and if we talk it up, we can get you to check it out. Especially if you're going to this fucking thing, you should really check out all these bands in advance, so you can know who to see and what. Because it sounds like. Like any festival, you kind of have to come prepared. So, uh, yeah, I guess um, the cool thing, a lot of them are bands that you would probably associate with Robert Smith or just would kind of, you know, know that he would be a fan of. But then there's a few surprises in there, too. So going down the list, I guess just some of the bigger ones off the top of my head. Um, um, my Bloody pro- Valentine. You want to start with them? All right. Yeah, we'll start with your probably. Are they your favorite from the list you've seen? Yeah. Okay. So Donald loves my bloody Valentine. So that's on the record officially. So big fan favorite for most 90% of Cure, probably 99% of Cure fans are huge fans. Yeah. Um, Great band. I dig them, but I'm not a huge fan, actually. I mean, I am. No, you're not a, you're not a super shoegazy dude. I'm not a shoegazy dude. And uh, it's, the, it's the vocals for me. I just feel like it's like <laughs> it's like cool, but it doesn't really just make me want to listen to it a lot. You know, like somebody puts Man. it on, I dig it. I love the musicianship and love the, the guitar tones and everything's cool, but I just need those like hooks and shit. You know, it's like a lot of it's not really. Yeah, it's you're my a lyric dude. dude. Yeah. Like, so. I'm not a lyric dude, and I love when like. All the li- like, um, you know, like some shoegaze band where it's just like the vocals are just like, like all you just hear is like a reverb be like in the background. Yeah. And it's like you have no idea what they're saying. Nah, it yeah. just like works with the song. And it's just like, that's what I'm like. Yeah. Like those are perfect lyrics. Like I have no idea what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, weird. And if I do understand it, it's probably something nonsensical that just <laughs> sounds pretty with what's happening in the song. You know, it's yeah. like. I love that shit. Yeah, it's weird because, I mean, like I said, I love it when 
I find out what the words are and they're great and stuff. I feel like a lot of the shoegaze bands in particular, I feel like it's kind of a cop out, you know, like the lyrics aren't that great or the person's voice isn't that great and they're kind of just masking it. There's you know? a lot and of it's that. Just like, it's like, just don't put it in. That's why, you know, I don't want to segue to Mogwai too quickly, but I feel like they're really cool in the sense that a lot of times they just, you know, you know, they just don't have it. So it's good. It's better than somebody just kind of mumbling through some shit, you know, even though they occasionally throw some Mogwai in. is not shoegaze. No. Nah. It's post rock. Yeah. But I mean, same idea though, like of what I did. But yeah, in a, it's in a catchy yeah. song or whatever. It's but, more guitar oriented. Yeah, like I see what you're saying. So yeah, but, um, I, I don't even want to segue to them too quickly. If you want to go on about my buddy Valentine, um, no. But I mean, they're yeah. Everyone pretty much has heard them at this point. I think. So yeah, you know they're what great. You're getting into, and uh, yeah, Loveless. I put on occasionally and enjoy, but I just don't really want to dig any deeper than that. Usually, they don't have too many albums, right? Don't they like? Yeah, they have like oh, isn't anything, and then like they did a new one. But they have like there's like my bloody rarities uh-huh. or something. It's just like all their like early singles and shit. Like yeah. all their, like they have a bunch of EPs like Tremolo and okay, so I yeah. can't think of the others. But they have a bunch of like EPs and singles that they put that's them my that's what I that's what I listen to all the time. Like yeah. I think that shit's great. Like it sounds. Some of it sounds completely different and yeah. than what you would think of Loveless and Yeah, yeah. But okay. but there's some jams on there, man. It's like Yeah. I mean they're they're one of those bands that keep coming back to every few years or stuff that I'm always like, This will be cool. the, this will be the time. So I always give it a go. But yeah, just and I always enjoy it. Like I said, I just never really want to stick with it. And even Mogwai to a certain degree, I like and them I've I've definitely grown on me more and more over the years and and for this even I just got their newest album, which I really like. I don't know if you've heard it. Oh, um, Every Country Song. Yeah, yeah. That record is so good. Yeah, like, I, I listened to that it. for two weeks, like twice a day for two weeks after I got out, like after I got out of work and shit. Yeah. And like my wife had to tell me to like, stop. Stop listening. She's <laughs> like, just give it a minute. And yeah. It's like, okay. Because the record is so good. I was really shocked. Yeah, that's cool. But Mago is one of my faves, dude. Yeah. Like, you, like I, lo- I love instrumental shit and like, yeah. And they're just so thematic and big with their guitar, like melodies and tones and mm-hmm. fucking push pull, quiet, good. And they've kind of like, it's been interesting to watch that band because they put out a lot of records. Yeah, and they've they got all it. been really fucking good. Like, like th- those guys fucking. St- Slink some dick, like yeah. They're a legit fucking band. They're <laughs> like, one, yeah. And I feel like they're one where I, you, I miss so much because they, like you said, they do have so many albums. Like I caught them really early on. Like I have a couple of their really early albums, and then like just kind of stopped like trying to get them and stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's cool, but I feel like I got enough for them, you know. And I don't really need yeah. those of them. And I feel like yeah, there's got to be some shit in the middle that I need to hear. But uh oh god, so, there's so many like. I really like even rec- uh-huh. oh like records that took me a while like because I initially like when I got into Mogwai I liked like bits and pieces about them mm-hmm. you know just very little specific things and there's a lot of like just guitar shit like like just caught me yeah um and then when they veered out of that it took me away a bit like as like they put out records and, right. And I didn't really give them enough attention and or enough respect. You know, I'd listen to them and just like, I don't know. Yeah. And then they just like fucking grew on me and grew on me because I'd listen to them all the time. Right. <laughs> like I didn't stop listening to them. And they, <laughs> cool. um, yeah, they like Mogwai just really surprised me. Like they're a gem um, in this world. Like that returned album, great. the soundtrack. Oh, God. Is it returned or the Shh. return? Returned. Past tense. Uh, the French show. Uh, yeah, I, I forget that it's like Les Revenants yeah, or something yeah. like. They did the whole soundtrack and. Uh, oh, it's so pretty. It's fucking great. Yeah, that's what kind of pulled me back into their world where I was like, because I felt like, I don't know, maybe they'd been doing some stuff prior to that, like album wise, but they're always very dynamic, like where they do like yeah. stuff. But like, I felt like there was a lot of just super cool chill stuff on that. And like, I really dig it when they kind of just 
you know, sometimes when they get a little carried away with the heavier shit, you know, I feel like it should just be a full on kind of more rock song with vocals and shit, you know, but like, yeah, um, when they do it super chill like that, I'm like, when they oh, get to like yeah, the chill, pretty stuff. Yeah, like, I love it. It was like, that was some cool shit on that. So. I listened to that uh, soundtrack all the fucking time. Yeah. Like, I'm going to clap. <laughs> but I, I listen to that one all the fucking time. It's so fucking, uh, it's so pretty, yeah. and it matches like the show, s- yeah, like, so yeah. well. Like it's cool show too. I know. Second season started to lose me a bit, but uh, first one was really awesome. I thought I haven't watched the second one yet. Yeah, it just gets a little boring, or I was just too tired or something. But yeah, the first one was uh, really cool, and uh, it took forever for the second season to come out too. But that's a whole other story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. We're just gonna kind of blaze through these too. Feel free to stop me if you want to. Yeah, I'm gonna blaze through these. Whoa! What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a band I can kind of gush over. Uh, Psychedelic Furs. I love these fucking nuts. I, I, I know they, they they stuck out for me too. Uh, like I was. They were in my top runners as a kid. Like when I was getting my uh, <laughs> new orders and cured albums, I was like right in there getting their Psychedelic Furs video mixes and shit and. Uh, of course, they didn't quite deliver the way a lot of the big ones do, but they're a great, like, fourth or maybe second or third tier of bands from the 80s that I really loved. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, that. and they're fucking just, they're hits. And that's kind of what I've reboiled it down to, even that's today, what's up. driving around. Like, yeah, dude. I put on the greatest hits, and my wife was like, oh, God, this is like, can you just play the good songs? I'm like, this is their greatest hits. <laughs> she's, she's like, even their greatest hits have, like, deep cuts. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. It was totally kind of true. Cause, I was like, yeah, it's Because, kind of like, stupid. when you get to, like, what is it, like, heartbreak? Heart, uh, yeah, I got heartbreak beat playing. No, oh, no. Jesus. That song is terrible. Oh, you don't like that one? I love that one. I mean, that one's cheesy as fuck, but I, I love it. You don't love that one. Do, Shut man. up. man. It's like, yeah, I mean, it just takes you back, but yeah, it's cheesy. I mean, that's definitely a whole, whole different. It takes me out it, it, of like, like they're good <laughs> songs, and I'm like, fuck yeah, this song's yeah. so good, and then it's like, oh, make me play it all just, night long. That's all rules, man. It, but I end up listening to it. It's like great in like, a Thompson I, Twins I, kind I, like, of way. I like hate sing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, heaven, goes to new pretty and pink like oh so great so many of those yeah you just get touch of uh love my way it's awesome uh, fairly recently here in Asheville, they came through and i kind of went with a friend thinking like whatever i just want to see the, the hits it'll be fun you know but the cool thing was they had like a fucking little sax dude like came out and like blasting some sax That's like dope. on every song like initially i was like oh god what you know, it's like, like oh god a saxophone yeah like Fuck. one of the best things that ever happened to a night like this was like swapping out the sax solo with the guitar solo you know but like <laughs> but for some reason they just like owned it you know and it was just like fuck man he was like nailing like like doing the foot on the monitor thing and like getting into the crowd and it was like fuck yeah he might as well have been rob Lowe from st elmo's fire <laughs> it was just like he's so just dope. killing it and i was just like damn i can't wait to see him again and they haven't they've been touring constantly but they haven't come back here and i, I really kind of want to see him again it was like that good where i was like damn like uh good uh, usage of horns yeah is always fucking great <laughs> man like that was like a- when it's done right it's just like ooh yeah that's another Sounds one of good. my wife's great comments on the she's like, that's a lot of brass and synth at the same time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, it works. You yeah. guys should have recorded a podcast. <laughs> I know, I keep trying to get she's it. She's dropping but... some bombs. <laughs> and she just kept making me mad. I was like, this is a hit. <laughs> Heartbreak beat. <feet. laughs> There's nothing it's wrong with this brass and synth. <laughs> but, uh, Shut up. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> moving on from those guys, another the one that um, <laughs> was a surprising one on the list that was No Twist. Um, and I think they're kind of yeah. probably one of the smaller bands that just got announced with the bigger bands. But um, I don't know what the deal is with this band, but uh, I really they like them. They play a lot of festivals. Yeah, they're really just... And I don't know if they've had chill. a ton of albums. Like, I think the one that I got was like Neon Golden, and that was like in 2002. Somehow I had one from ages ago and always like liked it, but never really... Hunted That's down more of their I, shit. I've listened to like I think I listened to like one of the like a a, a later one, but yeah, I never caught like that one. But that one is a really good record. Yeah, it has like that pick up the phone song and shit. It's like it's very simple. Yeah, like that's what I like about it. It's just like it's 
samples and playing and yeah. they, actual instruments and stuff. And it's just like, it's like that can get tacky quick. Yeah. And that guy does it well. Yeah. I feel <laughs> Are like, those dudes. I think it's like two dudes. Okay. Like they do it. They keep it classy, you know? Man, I German like band. I thought they might be Aussie even. Cause like his voice kind of sound like another Australian band that I like, but, um, from Ger- yeah, I think Germany. German. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I kind of feel like they sound like I wish they're the songs I wish New Order was making now. <laughs> it's like kind of like if New Order kept making shit now, that hopefully would have stemmed from their old shit. I kind of feel like yeah, cool. Yeah, and the one I it's snagged dope. was like a live one. I think they just put out superheroes, ghost villains, and stuff, and it kind of seemed like a lot <laughs> Is of that the, what it's called. Yeah, <laughs> superheroes, stuff. ghost villains, and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> Unless it's I just dope. got some weird version online, but that was the one I had, and, uh, and it was great because it was that. like, because uh, yeah, That's I was like, and it day. sounds really great live, so I think they'll be really cool live. So uh, there's a lot of those old songs from that golden yeah. neon golden album. So uh, Placebo, it's a big uh, crossover band. <laughs> They've worked together in the past, and uh, kind of cool to see those guys still kicking, and uh, <laughs> kind of the first of a string of bands that were from an era. But you'll remember us in the 90s growing up and fumbling through our musical endeavors and how my brother in particular was super big on he'd get all the NMEs and Melody Maker magazines and shit. And like all these bands were like, yeah, so he was real big on a lot of these bands or we were at least aware of some of the other ones. But Placebo is one that at least the album that I, you know, everybody knows the Without You, I'm Nothing. Um, They've put out a bunch, I'm sure. But that one and the one before were like the only ones I'm super familiar with. But when I re-listened to that one, it's fucking pretty rad. Like I was like, oh yeah, Pure Morning is a fucking cool song. I'll stand by that still. So I'm a little curious to hear what they've been up to. I want to. I haven't listened back to them forever. Yeah, like... should give at least Pure Morning again. I was like, oh man, that song fucking ruled, man. It was pretty. I mean, it is kind of like of that era now, which I didn't oh, it's realize. Slowly sinking in. I haven't listened to that song in so long. I'm like remembering just now needs- little. A friend indeed, a friend with, with butter, with butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, those are a bunch of really good ones on that album. And that song is kind of the jam, though. Yeah, so, so pretty cool. And um, manic street preachers, how do you feel about <laughs> these guys? They're one that were popping up around that time in the mid '90s, and got a billion albums. Um, I don't know. I because of those magazines, the name was always around, and I feel like we yeah. watched their videos on 120 minutes constantly, but never enough yeah. to reel me in. I remember the big deal with the guitarist went missing, which I think they've pronounced presumed dead at this point. But um, <laughs> some weird fucking stories with that. I started to go down a rabbit hole, and I was like, whatever. I don't know. I don't even know if I like this band. So I still like listen to. Uh, Holy Bible and um, Everything Must Go from 94 and 96. Still didn't really hook me. Like, moments of it, the vocals kind of seemed a little like Stereophonics, who we liked a lot, also from that era. But, uh, man, just like the songs didn't really totally pull me in, like catchiness was or anything. Maybe it just needs more listens. But any thoughts on them? I... W- I uh... I feel like I should like them because I like a lot of that. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're all they were totally <laughs> like on our radar, but like when I just never. But really... I think they're a little too jammy. I think that's why I never like it. Never clicked with me. I yeah. think they're a little too something gets uh, jammy, but they're cool. Like yeah. they've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Like they're a real band. In fact, they're still rolling. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bad talk them just because I don't know. Oh them. yeah, yeah. And that's but, kind of how I feel about you know a lot I mean? of these. It's like I don't know. I, didn't, I never had anything against a lot of them. I didn't really have anything for them. But I mean, I'm just a, as much to blame at that yeah. point in the band. So yeah, I'm just kind of curious. That's why I was doing this by myself, drunk in that corner of the room. I was going, like, I don't know, the the Libertines. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that guy Pete Dodery or whatever the fuck his name yeah. is. And he was just kind of more of a mess from Baby Shambles. I pieced together he was the dude from Baby baby shambles and i remember that was just like every like week he was on the cover or whatever the fuck and it's like crazy you know just like binger you know hardcore rock drug drunk dude you know whatever the fuck his deal was and and uh the band's funny man all those bands yeah all his bands are funny and i (laughs) like i i dabble in them just like 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 i think i own one libertines record and like their big one, and it's Up like, the bracket, it's like, by any chance? Yeah, yeah it's like catchy as fuck. It's like a cute record. It's funny. Like, 
Like it's stupid. Yeah, yeah, I was just kind of spazzy. <laughs> like, it's, it's not a, like, blah, 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 yeah. like, kind of like, but yeah, yeah. I kind of like, like that. Like, it's cool, yeah. I was like, uh, kind of dug it. I mean, I don't know how much I want to listen to I like that it. the guy's all fucked up. And yeah. Stuff. Like, if, it's, <laughs> I mean, I, I wish him well, yeah. but it's kind of interesting just to see someone, like, He's probably be that fucked up and put out records, like, it, you could, you know, yeah, like, he's probably doing great. It, it's now. an interesting still... thing to hear, yeah. you know. <laughs> it, it's it to me. It's it's uh, that record and that band is like people watching. Yeah, you know, you like go to the mall and just watch people. Or I never go to the mall, but you go out in public <laughs> and like watch people. Yeah, and just just watch them, watch them, <laughs> watch people be people. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah. It seems like if nothing else, it's a miracle. This dude's still alive and doing anything. So mm-hmm. that's worth putting way, him on the bill. Just yeah. Like these guys are fucking great. <laughs> like Something how crazy insane. will happen. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> add one fucking wild card to the mix or something. But, I don't I mean, know, maybe the, yeah, maybe. Wizened, <laughs> he's an old wizened man. Yeah. At true. This, point, <laughs> you this know? old man Smith. But, uh, <laughs> Old Man Smith and his festival. <laughs> <laughs> bands from 20 years ago. Uh, speaking of oldie band, The Church, you ever listen to them much? Other than... Uh, I always give Starfish, the 1988 album that most... I'm sure they've got a billion albums. I even just heard one of their new songs, and it was pretty good. But uh, Under the Milky Way, so good. You just kind of... It's all you ever really listen to i always just go to that one song you know you f- you're familiar with them and that one i am familiar with the church mm-hmm. like i can't i can't get into them like i've tried yeah. and people have shoved them down my fucking throat <laughs> for the year like throughout the years it's just like yeah like just it's like i can't i can't i've tried yeah. i've listened to whole records like sitting in someone's basement like smoking pot and listening to records you want to hear some church <laughs> yeah and it's like okay put them on let's hear it and uh and it just like i get it it's fine like i don't hate it yeah. it's just, I, I it just doesn't catch me like <laughs> like a lot of them i have nothing against it but at the same time exact same thing or just didn't pull me in but anyway <sighs> moving on the deftones are another big name one that i'm whatever i just like i tried to find what would be their most like widely accepted album the the stuff that i checked down was white pony um sounds great that's that's one of their big boys yeah and uh they're like first one on the list on the posters i mean clearly people love this band but i just like maybe it's just too that hardcore edge or i don't know what would you even count call them they seem like they got to be masters in the field of it but uh I mean, are they new metal? Like, they've been around before all that shit, right? But I think they're a little, like, pre-new metal. Yeah, like, like I the never, I never... of new metal. <laughs> yeah, kind of. probably offending so many fans at this point, but I don't know. It just, it just seems like... No, a lot of, like, that, that, <laughs> I was like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, there's, it's like that... <clears throat> like emo screamo yeah i wouldn't categorize them as any of those like i think they're Just around hardcore, enough to call them like alt alt hard- hardcore <laughs> post <laughs> post uh post something yeah. or something you like um it's like john yeah i can never yeah <laughs> yeah they are like, like but you know all the power to them and you know i think anybody that's heard anything i have to say would see why i wouldn't like them probably but uh but they they navigated they were a band like a good band that navigated uh through a very choppy waters in the uh world of being a big band yeah like a weird a weird time yeah. you know <laughs> and they did it like Good for them. Late nineties again. When was this? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think late nineties, early two thousands. Okay. Yeah. Uh, other huge one that we didn't miss, but they're actually <laughs> not on the list. Of nine Inch Nails, like playing this fucker. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I went back and revisited Pretty Hate Machine, the debut. 1989. That's a fucker, man. <laughs> I actually That's enjoyed it. a crazy it. fucking record. <laughs> I was like, this is actually pretty fun now. Like, I think just because yeah. of all the hype and stuff growing up as a kid, I never like had any <laughs> yeah. fuck off care for anything really. <laughs> I was like, whatever. You know, the videos are constantly playing, yeah, and I don't even record the videos, and they're fine in small doses, but... 
never a huge fan, but um, but yeah, it's like and just knowing that he's like stuck around and you know done cool things aside, <laughs> it kind of gives it a little more cred now. But uh, it's a weird yeah. album, like. Like definitely, some of the songs were just fucking cooler than I thought they were in a weird like yeah, 1989 way. I was like, this is actually fun and cool, like the old yeah. down the line and shit. It was like, mm. and um, but yeah, and like yeah, of course the big fucking singles and stuff. But uh, and then funny just to realize what a t- and terrible slap, singer like, he was. That was <laughs> Oh yeah, it's totally. So bad. I was like, some of the like deep cuts on that. I was just like, oh god, it sounds like just. Is like, there like a couple where he's, where he's like talking kind of like him Yeah, I think so. Like, no, it's and it's just, just like, what are you doing? Like definitely some of the ones. Are you, are you like sing? I meant to talking? make a note of one near the end that was just ridiculous. I forget what it. It almost like started. <laughs> it was like he was trying to do like tough Depeche mode, but with like shitty vocals. Or something. It was really weird. Like it kind of like had a weird like perspective on it while I was listening to it. I was like, Oh, I get it. Like in the sense now of like how he's just like trying to like take everything from like Depeche mode. But if you just put like distortion on everything and like toughed it up more and then like, but like, like he just doc- doctor up goofy vocals. Yeah. But he was still trying to Fuck sing yeah. some shit. He was singing some, some line. I forget what it was. I meant to jot it down, but it was just like, so like kind of a sappy line almost. <laughs> so it's like, Ugh. it's all like, yeah, and he was just like, oh, 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 oh. It just like, was kind of like out of, out of tune and shit. It just couldn't really sing very well. I was like, Oh wow. But, uh, but yeah, it's cool. And then you're like, yo dude, I've been there too. Yeah. But it was just like such weird. You listen back to your first record. Oh yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but I'm not playing a fucking festival with Robert Smith either. <laughs> so it's a little more surprising. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but I love the humbleness of like that record is yeah. like it's very sincere. Is the word I'm looking yeah, for? It's yeah, very yeah. fucking sincere and like I'm with you. Like I didn't listen to it till like. I really get into it. I listen to it a ton because, like, just when I was a kid, like, a lot it. of my friends yeah, yeah. listen to that. Like, fucking Matt and yeah, Brandon fucking, always had it playing, like, constantly. And was just yeah, like, and I was always just like, yeah, fucking stop. And yeah. I never got into it, but, like, as an adult, I, like, I went back and, like, researched and, yeah. you know, just listened back to it and, like, actually kind of had the same exact thing as yeah, was what you're saying it was just like, whoa, this is actually like really fucking dope. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it almost seemed like funner too, and maybe just that's what I was getting at with his vocals being a little shitty. I didn't mean to take a dig at him, but it was like more that it was like because he always just came off so serious and everything was just so like and like serious and trying to be pure. tough and stuff. But yeah, it was just kind of goofy almost, or it was just like yeah. not like, you know what I mean? Like you're saying, or just like you kind of oh, see yeah. through the holes of the sense of like, oh, he's just a Man. fucking kid making a record, you know? It's I love, like, it's kind of cool. Some of my favorite, I love so many records where like, like where it's just like the sincerity comes through so fucking hard even if it there's like some goofs and yeah like, um just bad choices God, I love even. <laughs> yeah it's just like wow yeah, like a- i see like i like we're like like records are like where they're trying something and they're going out of their their limited bit and they're like you know they, they use some distortion on some vocals or something or whatever yeah. and it's just like i would have done the same thing right. when i was 20 <laughs> putting out a fucking record you know it's like i see where you're going like it wasn't the right decision but i would have done the same thing yeah. like i love records like that and that ended up being like a record like that mm-hmm. for me you know it's just like i get where you're going dude like <laughs> And it worked, uh, you know, whatever the fuck he did. And he's, uh, he's done well yeah. for himself. I think he even won the Deserves Grammy for every the... every ounce, every ounce, man. That dude's yeah. legit. Like, I wish I liked his music more, but, like, yeah, his, yeah. his synth and, like, ideas are, like, he'll make, like, synthesizers and, like, different th- machines yeah. to make music. And he'll use, like, just really cool stuff and do it in really cool ways. Yeah, for sure. Like, where it's like I really respect that and like that like yeah. that dude and legit deserves. musical scores on a lot of stuff now too so yeah he's cool. done some good ones Sam but keeping with some heavier shit two of those bands that I was totally unfamiliar with um, Anchorus was one and they sounded way too kind of new metal-y again I don't know maybe it was just 
a little too heavy for me, but uh, some album called Confessions of Romance Novelist came out in 2016. Um, what was that called? Confessions, Confessions. of a Romance Novelist. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was my, just like a lot. My of balls just, just sucked up <laughs> back into my my abdomen. <laughs> like yeah. that's the <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> that title, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so they were a little. <laughs> I haven't heard this band, but so check them out. Let me know if we're missing something. But it just seems a little too. Uh, uh, but something you may like a little better was Alceste. I might be mispronouncing it. A French black game and then had in parentheses Oof. some kind of black metal they've been called to but um just like a french rock band of sorts and uh kodama i think was the name of the album and uh yeah kind of same deal a lot of that kind of raw vocals which i'm definitely not into but uh seemed like a lot cooler guitar work and stuff so i think you might actually dig these dudes uh, uh, might might be worth checking out alcest a-l-c-e-s-t so I don't know if they're yeah, younger. Yeah, I'm gonna check these dudes well. out. But um, I mean, I feel like the fact that they were French maybe gave me more of the benefit of the doubt over the other band. <laughs> I'm like, all right, no, they're French, the, maybe they're cool or something. I don't know. Nah, no, like French black metal is the shit. Yeah, so like, maybe it's like, this is my favorite. Like, I, <laughs> like it, it's some of the most like, it's just some of the most raw shit. Yeah. Where it's just like we have a boombox. <laughs> And we're gonna record on that, yeah. and, and like they get down. Like this is my favorite. It's like a little theatrical in the uh, guitar work and like the chords, mm-hmm. but it's just like good garbage. Like puka 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 drums, and they just sound like they're recorded like shit. Mm. But the guitar is like very dramatic. Cool. Um, but it's all like. Grrr. Yeah. It's so good. Well, and, like, I want to hear this band so bad. Yeah, it's check like, them out, man. I think another one you might dig yeah. is the – I don't know if you heard much of their other stuff, but that the one I snagged anyway was Wild Light, uh, 65 Days of Static. Um, have you heard any of their other stuff? Or? I've listened to that record. Yeah, I am. And I, it was – Definitely it was a weird one. And I, right? I, and uh, lots of just – long songs that kind of build <laughs> i don't know yeah i mean i liked it more than i thought i would but at the same time yeah it was just kind of that my problem with a lot of that i was like oh get on with it i was like it's just so yeah. it took forever to get anywhere but uh but i don't know Look, i was pleasantly I, surprised oh no i could never get into it too much but i listened to it mm-hmm they one of his most recent collaborations was with them. They put out that song "Eat Static," where Robert did some vocals on it. it was one of my yeah, l- least favorite ones of his more recent. It wasn't bad, but it just kind of was, nah. you know. It wasn't. I didn't find it exceptional by any means, but uh, cool that he did it. And uh, so, j- like, kind of judging that, I, like... I didn't think I'd like that much, but it was kind of cool. Mm, I, I like. I don't want to shit on bands. Yeah, but... no. Well, yeah. I think we're just <laughs> but, saying um, it's not our bag. We're not really saying it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm really picky about bands that incorporate like too much, you know, like guitar and like the electronic electronic realm. You know, yeah. like sometimes it just like it doesn't come off right for me. Like. I get where they're going. It's like, it's cool. It's hard to do and it's cool that they can do it. Mm-hmm. I can appreciate that, but it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't really do it. I know. So, it appears when Donald uh, took a bathroom break right after this segment, he um, either A, forgot to turn his mic back on, or B, screwed up something on the mix back to me when he sent me the files. So unfortunately, we lose Donald at this point. Maybe those bong hits were one too many. But um, it's okay, because we were wrapping up anyway, and we're kind of just on that last batch of bands and artists on the Meltdown Festival that um, we were kind of blazing through. But since we recorded this episode, um, they announced a whole bunch more, the full listing. Um, So just a quick rundown. Kristen Hirsch from Throwing Muses fame. Never been a huge fan of her songwriting so much, but um, 
uh, you know, she's great in her own right. So a huge fan base, I'm sure, which will add a lot of good variety to the sets and the artists performing at Meltdown Festival. Catherine Joseph, uh, another songwriter, kind of folkier um, songwriter worth checking out. Um, had a connection to Twilight Sad. Uh, I think she has a side project band with James from Twilight Sad. And strangely enough, and I went back and edited out, we were shocked that Twilight Sad had not been announced as part of this festival. And there was a segment where we were debating why uh, Twilight Sad wouldn't be included. Overkill? Who knows? But guess what? They added them to the bill. So so everyone will be happy to know more Twilight Sad involved. And um, Joy Formidable is a band that I enjoy a lot. So they're on the list. Low is a band that's uh, got to be a favorite amongst Cure fans. Um, we've been listening to them for ages. Uh, really cool band. Uh, also, The Trees has a lot of Cure history. Lowell produced their first album, I believe it was. So another exciting one. Um, Frightened Rabbit. It's a pretty rad band that most people are familiar with, so they got added to the bill. Mono and Loop were two that Donald was familiar with. I am not familiar with them, but he gave his thumbs up to those artists. And Death Cab for Cuties, kind of a surprise bigger name one that got added. Um, I've always been torn on them. They have some amazing songs. They have some that are like, eh. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's cool. They can uh, be thrown into the mix, so uh, everyone's probably fairly familiar with them. And Susanna Vega as well. So, uh, you know, everybody's got at least one Susanna Vega song that they enjoy, I think. So pretty much some good variety sprinkled in there in the later announcements. So go see the full list. It's listed on um, the official Cure website at this point and ticket information if it's somehow still available. But with all of that, the big news that came in, and it's great that I can kind of tack this on here at the end because there was a big announcement in an interview on uh, Radio 6, BBC Radio 6 with Robert Smith this week. And um, pretty much anyone that's listening to this, I'm sure you caught wind of this on the internet already, but it was amazing. About a 20-minute little interview with Robert Smith and just so great to hear his voice speaking in the present tense, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, especially us doing this show, I'm always going back and listening to old interview clips and stuff, and it's always stuff from at least... 10 years back you know but usually way later even so um it's almost eerie like hearing about him talking excited to talk about things that haven't happened yet and uh and it's just really cool so we'll put a link to that if you've somehow missed it it's definitely in our facebook link for this thread for this episode but um lots of awesome news so much uh speculation can further be done on what he said but there is a lot to just keep our fingers crossed and hope for you know at this point we kind of have heard a lot of great news that didn't quite pan out, you know, but um, there's no real reason to believe that a lot of this won't. Some of the big highlights were, um, first off, on the theme of the Meltdown Festival, which was the whole point of why he was doing the interview. Um, really sweet just to hear him talk about how excited he was picking these bands and how he uh, really got into finding new music. He didn't want it to make it just this crazy festival of stuff that doesn't fit. You know, he really wanted to keep it to indie rock kind of such, um, more or less. And um, and how this got him listening to more n new music than he had in years. So uh, so that was cool just to hear that he kind of went on the search and found these bands and um, and he was said that his main list surprisingly most of the bands were down Duh, of course they'd be but uh minus the rolling stones i didn't quite catch if that was a joke or not but i think he did try to get the rolling stones to play it but um maybe not um so yeah the idea that he um got so inspired by these bands picking these bands and listening to this new bands it's got him writing songs and wanting to contribute to music again and uh, he's got official demo time booked in the next month for The Cures going into demo. A lot of headlines after this got posted seem to be jumping the gun a little bit. It's like, new Cure album coming out in 2019. I was like, well, let's not get overexcited just because he's demoing. I mean, he says it himself in the interview that if it doesn't pan out, it doesn't really matter. And uh, they just won't do anything with it. But it's the first step. And uh, strange, though, that uh, it, it's all fairly new. It sounded like songs that he's written in the last six months and starting this up, which is a little odd. You would think in the last 10 years he would have had uh, at least a few gems. So maybe he does. Maybe he's carrying over a few. Um, but he says some are good, some are all right, that he wasn't even that crazy about. But they're going to try it out, and that's enough 
hope for me to get excited about. So, uh, yeah, that's cool news. But sound a little more concrete was that um, 2019 will be a year to look forward to for Cure fans and that there's going to be other shows and tours of some sort, whether they're festivals sprinkled around a, a mini tour or just a full on mega tour. He didn't even know yet. You know, he mentioned celebrating the 30th anniversary of disintegration, which would be super rad. Everybody would be into that. I'm sure. Um, like, uh, we had mentioned in a Instagram thread that, uh, how crazy that we've talked about the 30 turning 30 was such a big deal in writing disintegration. And now disintegration itself is 30 years old. That's pretty uh, epic if you really want to dive into the headspace of that. But um, so, yeah, a lot to look forward to. The the part that really made me happy, I just had, you know, every Cure album and, and event at this stage, you kind of worry if this is the end. And the Hyde Park show did seem like 40th anniversary, you know, wow, that'd be a tidy way to just wrap it all up, right? Maybe in the end he just explodes or something, you know, like a... Uh, it sends up into the sky like an angel or something, but he's, he confirmed or he's saying officially it's not the last show. So who knows? He's always saying it's the end and, and it isn't. So maybe this would be the end. Who knows? But, um, it was very cool to see that there's stuff to look forward to in 2019. And I will definitely be doing that. It's not the end festivals. I hope it's not just a run of festivals, but, uh, you know, we'll take what we can get, I reckon. And, uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, definitely worth checking out that interview so much more in there and uh, great just to hear him make some jokes and talk in his great Robert way and uh, that just leads us to record store day this weekend we also did get big news seems fairly confirmed at this point that in June June 15th there's been dates leaked that uh, they will do a regular release of mixed up on vinyl probably regular vinyl not the picture disc um, and torn down and more importantly from my griping earlier in this episode um, it will be released on a three disc CD reissue. It'll be the first album remastered for 2018, a second disc, which is kind of just a collection of extended mixes and stuff from the past. Most of which I probably have heard at some point on first glance, maybe a few, uh, in there, but like the new voice extended mix, you know, from boys don't cry and stuff like that. So it'll be great to have all those in one package and more importantly, having a CD of, um, torn down so i hope i didn't sound super anti-vinyl earlier i didn't really have anything against vinyl definitely nothing against vinyl as a uh format it's just new vinyl kind of bugs me a little if i didn't make that clear it's just very expensive and you know they go out of their way to like say hey it's pressed up on heavy duty 180 gram vinyl or whatever the highest quality it's so crystal clear it's almost like listening to a cd so i almost want my vinyl to sound shittier right that's the whole point is that it's supposed to sound a little grainier you know 80s synth stuff and rock always sounds a little better on on vinyl for sure and, and earlier of course but um i don't know i think there's a lot of trickery involved in this vinyl revival that i don't quite want to subscribe to i feel like it's easier to take care of a cd too everyone turned on cds Anyway, uh, that's a whole other debate. It's way too late for that. So um, we'll wrap up with that. I, can't, I look forward to hearing everybody's Record Store Day adventures. I, I'll probably still end up in that fucking line. And um, I won't be able to wait a month to hear those new remixes. But uh, I wish everyone luck. And more importantly, on Robert Smith Day this weekend, have a beer, have a glass of wine, have a whole case of beer, a whole bottle of wine, and celebrate someone that I think we all hold very dear to our heart. Since Donald isn't here to make fun of me, I will get sappy and say that, uh, you know, for someone that I've never met, he means the world to me and uh, has definitely impacted my life and changed my life. Um, I definitely wouldn't be the same person if the cure and robert smith never existed so you take 59 years of somebody's life in the way that robert smith has handled 59 years of life and uh you can only celebrate that so um you know cheers to robert smith fucking amazing person and great artist i mean i don't know him so maybe he's not a great person but as far as his art goes it has touched my heart in a way that no other artist has 
and probably ever will at this point. And, um, yeah, so happy fucking birthday, Robert Smith. We love you. And um, we look forward to uh, 59 more years of celebrating your life. And uh, we don't want to leave without promoting our buddy Chaz. Hopefully we're going to get an episode in here. But he has started up an awesome T-shirt website where he's uh, – Cranking out some t-shirts, some cure-related t-shirts. The web address is 17secondshirts.bigcartel.com. And, of course, we'll have a link for that in this thread. And he's already got two shirts that he's pressed up, a pornography shirt and an in orange uh, font. You know, it says the cure and in orange on it. And both are amazing black shirts. They fit great. They're 100% cut, and uh, they're cool. We, we've talked when we first met Chaz. I was had many discussions of how sometimes these bootleg shirts are a little cooler than a lot of the ones they sell out there, and, uh, and they're affordable, too. It's Nothing gets you pissier than looking at some eBay shirt you already even had 20 years ago, and they're selling it for 200 fucking dollars. So, ah, uh, so don't bother with that anymore. Check out these Chaz shirts. He's got the right idea, and he's handling it in the right way, and uh, these shirts are great. So check out 17 Second Shirts. Can't wait to talk nerd talk with him about t-shirts and past care shirts and his ideas for the future so check that out and of course check out our buddy arusha's upcoming film push cure fan documentary and fanzine so um, check out curefandocumentary.com and of course remixgifts.com is the perfect place to find all kinds of cool music related cure related gifts and uh and much much more so all those guys creating and making great projects out there that I think every Cure listener would be super keen on. And until next time, I'll just have to say talk hard. And on behalf of Donald, sorry uh, sorry you got cut out of the end here. But in honor of Donald, I'll do a little talk hard. And uh, happy Record Store Day. Happy Robert Smith Day. Happy Meltdown.